everybody and welcome back to Flock Talk. Today we are going to be teaching your bird how to do an emergency U-turn for recall. So an emergency U-turn is exactly what it sounds like. It is when your bird has happened to have been flying away, maybe someone left a door open or they got spooked, and you need them to quickly make a U-turn, turn right back around and come flying straight for you. This is especially critical if you have a fully flighted bird in your home just in case an accident were to occur. Anything from your bird flying towards a hazard, a window, or an open door could all be situations that your bird might need to be quickly recalled mid-flight and have to be able to figure out how to turn around and come back to you. As much as this sounds like a skill your bird should be able to do, turning around on a dime is very challenging, not to mention when you are also combating a fearful state of mind. Generally speaking, if your bird is spooked and flying away, they're not going to be in the headspace to respond to cues, especially if it's a behavior that they haven't been able to really practice before. So that's why it can be super important that we take the time to actually train these behaviors specifically, because it might be a little bit harder than you might think it is. So although we do want to be teaching our birds how to do a big ol' U-turn in the middle of flying, we're going to break this down into simple steps and start with them running around on a flat surface. I am just using the floor here. Here, but you could just as easily use a table or a countertop, something, whatever you've got available to you. Um, I am working with the floor here, and what we are doing is just rewarding our birds for the U-turn motion. It's a lot easier to teach them how to do a U-turn from a slow walking position than it is while flying. So that's why we're going to be starting here. And a couple key things for this. So we're not going to be clicking for when the bird makes it back to us. We're going to be clicking our clickers or saying yes the moment that the bird actually does the U-turning motion. So as soon as their body has fully rotated back to you, that's the moment that you will mark with your clicker and then the treat will be delivered once they've made it back to you. Once your bird is reliably understanding that motion, you're going to add in a little bit of a distraction or a target stick or an object that you think your bird is going to want to move towards. I am using a sealed treat jar for this, just so that way the birds can't get into it and be self-reinforcing for ignoring me. So what I'm going to do is have our sealed treat jar, or whatever object you are working with here, and I'm going to encourage my birds to move towards it, hoping that they get a little bit distracted and are actively wanting to engage with this thing. And as soon as that happens, I'm going to call their names, use my recall cue, and click as soon as they turn away from the object and give the treat once they make it back to me. The first few reps will probably be pretty slow for this. Your bird's probably going to be pretty distracted by the object. They're not familiar with recalling off of something that they're distracted by. So it's really, really common for them to get a little distracted, spend a little extra time with that object, and that is totally okay. If you have used your recall cue and your bird is still distracted by that object, there's a few things you can do. You can either bring your hand up close to them and guide them back, or you can start making other noises. So you might whistle, make some kissy sounds, just try not to repeat your recall cue more than once during this repetition. So as you go through this, you'll notice your bird get a little bit faster each time if you're doing it right, and they should not be getting nearly as distracted with the object. So you're still gonna be sending them out towards it or encouraging them to engage with it, but they're gonna be turning right around and recalling back to you pretty, pretty quickly. Once you're at a point with this where you can send your bird out and they're turning around as soon as you say their name the first time with 90% accuracy, that's when you can move on to trying to work with flight. Do keep in mind that when we make this transition, it is extremely challenging, right? We're going from walking slowly and calmly to now flying full speed, because birds, let's be real here, they don't really have more than one speed when they're flying, you know, 80% of the time. It's really challenging for them to actually transfer this behavior from walking to flying. Um, so you will have a little bit of a step back there where the bird doesn't really understand what we're transitioning to. Just stick with it, we will get there, it just takes a little bit of time. Once we have this super snappy recall happening here where I'm able to send Newt away to the object and call him and he's actually flying back now, he's not walking back, I've set my hand a little bit higher off the ground to help encourage that flying to start happening. That's when we know that we're ready to move on to the next step. So we've got Newt being sent away to the treat jar to get distracted. I call his name, he immediately turns around and starts flying. He doesn't spend too much time actually trying to walk back. That's when we've got as good as we're gonna be able to have when transitioning from the ground to the air. Now, when we are moving into the air, I'm going to introduce a concept to Newt, which is just flying from one hand to the next hand. I'm not going to be sending him away to a different object and ask for that U-turn quite yet. What I'm trying to do is build a strong reinforcement history from landing from one hand back to, the, to a hand again. 
instead of there being a middleman of a different perch where then it can become really difficult to kind of phase that out. I'm trying to just build a really strong reinforcement history where if he takes off from a hand and lands on a hand again, it's heavily reinforced, he gets a huge jackpot reward, and that way he will be more motivated to come back and land on a hand again. This is a very crucial step, otherwise you're going to be very, very stuck on these next parts and your bird's going to have a hard time understanding that you don't actually want them to land on the perch in the next step. What we can do to try and make this transition from the ground to the air a little bit easier is we're going to actually guide our birds through the U-turn motion in the air. This is going to require a lot of movement from you, but what we're trying to do is help them develop those muscles required to actually make a tight U-turn. And how we're going to do this is we're going to send our bird off, but have our secondary hand just in front of them so it's clearly in their line of sight, and we're going to use that to guide them around and back towards us. So this way we are luring them, basically, in that U-turn motion to help get that pattern kind of in their heads, get them familiar with turning around and coming back, help develop those flight muscles, build that confidence a little bit before we expect them to be able to understand how to do that motion completely on their own in the air. So this next step is going to be utilizing stationing behaviors. So I'm going to send Newt to the perch and I'm going to click and reward and treat him for going to the perch just so he gets a few repetitions of understanding that I want him to head towards the perch right off the hop just to get that in his behavioral repertoire for this session. What I'm going to start doing is sending Newt away and quickly calling his aim almost as soon as he's taken off. Now I want to set this up so that way my station perch is very far away. I want there to be ample time for Newt while flying to be able to process the fact that his name has been called and really come to the conclusion of what I want him to do. If the perch is really, really close to him when he's taken off, there's not going to be a lot of time for him to really think and process that information. Uh, and be able to turn around. So the further away you can have your station perch, the easier this is going to be. And this is where we're kind of stuck for a really long time. This behavior took me two days to figure out and it was a lot of back and forth. So I'm sitting here and you'll notice that I am now working with my hands again because I was sending Newt to station to that perch and trying to call his name really quickly and he was really stuck in not understanding that I didn't actually want him to reach the perch. So what I start to do is bounce back and forth a little bit and if I notice that he's spending a bit too much time on each perch or he's you know just standing there and not really recalling back right as quickly as I would like him to be I'll go back to just having him fly from one hand to the next hand and jackpot those and that's a really crucial part so if I send Newt away to this perch and the end result would be that I would call his name and he would turn around in the air instead of actually reaching the perch if I throw him there or send him off to the perch and he lands there, I'm aiming to reinforce extremely short periods of time on that perch. So if he lands there and immediately turns around and comes back, I will give him a small reward for it. Yeah, he hit the perch, but he was quick about it. He can still have a treat. He did his best with the information that I've given him. If I send him to that perch and he sits around, looks around for a little bit, spends more time there, I'm not going to treat him for that because he was extremely slow and that's not the behavior that I want. So I'm going to try and phase that out by not rewarding it. Additionally, what I'm going to be jackpotting for, so this is giving a super valuable reward or a lot of little rewards, is when he lands back on my hand without hitting that middleman perch. So when I take these steps in between where I'm bouncing back and forth from sending him to the perch to sending him straight to my hand, the moments when he lands on my hand are the times that I'm going to give him a super valuable treat. That might be a sunflower seed. It could even be something like a piece of fruit, whatever your bird finds most valuable in, in everything. That's what you're going to want that jackpot reward to be. And that's going to help him understand a bit more clearly that landing on the perch is getting him something, but it's not giving him as much value as landing straight back on the hand is. And that's going to be a really crucial step in helping them bridge this gap here of being sent towards the perch, landing back on the hand, and not wanting to actually land on the perch in the middle because that's not as valuable. This will take a lot of time and how long it takes your bird to figure this out does come down a lot on you and what your timing is like and your precision with your rewards because if you are not utilizing your jackpots and you're not utilizing different values of reinforcers this can be very challenging for your bird to figure out because it's a big big step that we are asking them to make. We are asking them to understand 
a stationing behavior and a recalling behavior and just breaking off the station in the middle. We're, we're quite literally asking them to disobey the first cue and come back instead. And that's very, very difficult for a bird to understand, for any animal to understand. So you really wanna make sure that you are utilizing your jackpots when making this transition so that way your bird can have a clearer understanding of what behavior is less valuable and which one is more valuable at this point in time. If you are able to utilize that all correctly, you will end up with this very beautiful U-turn recalling behavior where you have now taught your bird that recalling is more valuable than anything else. And when you are working with this behavior, I would make sure to practice this in all sorts of scenarios. So using different valued reinforcers, have different things that your bird is flying towards, work with out of sight things, have yourself around a corner when you send them away so the bird has to learn how to U-turn and come back to you even though you're not visible. All of those sorts of things will help really solidify this behavior and make it so that way if there is an accident where someone leaves the door open and your bird is panicked and they've flown out the door, they will know that that recall cue is so overwhelmingly valuable that no matter what else is going on during that point in time, they should be able to turn around and know exactly what to do. Come and find you, land on you, and be safe. So that is it for this behavior. It is a little bit of a trickier one to teach and it can be quite challenging for our birds to get a grasp of, but it is a super, super critical behavior for them to understand. It's one of those behaviors that you hope you never have to use, but in a worst case scenario, you will be so happy that you have it. So that is it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.